All right, we have a bit of an oddball question, but uh, I guess we'll just dive in. So consider a particle of charge Q at mass M free to move in the XY plane in response to an electromagnetic wave propagating in the Z direction. Okay, this is equation 9.48. Might as well set delta or the phase angle equal to zero. A, ignoring the magnetic force, find the velocity of the particle as a function of time. Assume the average velocity is zero. B. Now note the resulting magnetic force on the particle. Or now calculate the resulting magnetic force on the particle. C. Show that the time average magnetic force is zero. The problem with the uh, naive model for the pressure of light is that the velocity is 90 degrees out of phase with the fields. For energy to be absorbed, there's got to be some resistance to the motion of the charges. Suppose that we include a force of the form negative gamma mv for some damping constant gamma. Now, repeat part a, ignore the exponentially damped transient, and repeat part b and find the time and find the average magnetic force on the particle. All right, so although it's a chunky question, we have two things to consider, um, one without the damping force and one with it. All right, so uh, from the text, we know that our electric magnet and electric magnetic wave fields uh, are E Z of T is equal to E naught cosine K Z minus omega T plus delta in the X direction. Um, B has to be perpendicular, so E naught over C with everything else the same. Now, the average function value, which I talked about last question, is defined as um, for some thing X. Uh, some function x, some value x, formula x, whatever, is the integral of x dt over the integral dt. Okay, this is a result straight from calculus. Nothing too crazy there. But since the bottom integral is just, um, uh, can be evaluated in t minus 0, we just write it as 1 over t, uh, integral 0 to t, x dt. Uh, pretty simple there. Not always the case, but pretty simple. All right, so anyways, jump into the solution. Since we are ignoring the magnetic force, the force equation is Fe is equal to Qe, but that has to all sum to Ma. All right, so with that, and we're trying to find the velocity here, we have Qe naught cosine Kz minus omega t plus zero x hat is equal to m dv dt. All right, solving for dv dt, we have Qe naught over m cosine Kz minus omega t in the x hat direction. Again, quick little differential equation, cal or integrate through. We see that we get V is equal to Q E naught M times one negative one over omega sine now in the X direction uh, plus some constant C. But V average equals zero. So if that's the case, then C has to equal zero. Otherwise, the V average would just equal C. Since we're told that V average equals zero, C has to equal zero. Cool. So, um... With that, what we see here is that V is equal to negative uh, Q E naught over M omega sine KZ minus omega T in the X hat direction, where omega is equal to CK. So that omega and K relationship is going to be with us all chapter as well. All right, so for part B, the magnetic force is F equal FM equal Q V cross B. Since we have V now from above, we just take their cross product. And we see the magnetic force from this is negative Q squared E naught squared over N omega C sine uh, and cosine of the same arguments in the Z hat direction since X cross Y Z. All right, now C, the time average of the magnetic force, well, as you saw from the uh, definition here, we need to take the 1 over T. Um, and here one period is 2 pi over omega. So we just take 1 over 2 pi over omega and then integrate 2 2 pi over omega of everything with dt. Let's let that simplify down. Take all the constants to the front. We see omegas cancel in the z hat direction, of course. Um, and if we just integrate this with respect to t, we just do a u sub on uh, sine. Yeah, which goes to cosine. Integrate that back. Um, pretty easy to deal with there. Or you can you could do either way. Just carry your negative accordingly um 
Yeah, and then just evaluate that through. Again, Symbol Labs is a great tool for it. Really no big deal. Plug everything in. We see we get uh, sine squared KZ minus 2 pi minus uh, sine squared KZ. But we know that sine is a 2 pi periodic function. So what this tells us is that although we simplify everything else out front, we get the FM average is equal to Q squared E naught squared over 4 pi M omega C is the at direction. Um, and we'll let that simplify through. And we see that this goes to sine squared KZ minus sine squared KZ. So that goes to zero. And uh, we see that the average force is zero. Who would have thought? Um, magnetic forces, of course, have to be awkward. Now for part D, if we include the damping term, then our force equation goes to F equal QE minus the damping term, uh, gamma MV, which is equal to MA. Again, this is all just a differential equation. And what we need to do is get all the Vs to one side, which is what we do uh, in the next step. Uh, divide by M, as you see, just to get the DVDT by itself. So uh, in the solution for this, which you can use several different things, uh, variation of parameters comes to mind. Um, go back to your differential equations text, or I'll link something if needed. Um, so, But if we ignore the exponential term, the transient term that is given by gamma V, and solve this for the steady state solution, which happens with everything neglecting the gamma V, we see that V is equal to A cosine KZ minus omega T plus theta in the, Z to, in the X direction. And we need to find a coefficient by plugging this into the differential equation. Additionally, to find A and theta, we need to use the sum and difference trig identity in the form of cosine U is equal to cosine theta times cosine of U plus theta plus sine theta, sine u plus theta. Again, this is all manipulation of the sum and difference identities for sine and cosine. All right, so if we plug in the uh, form here, the steady state solution form into the equation, um, what we see is that on the left-hand side, we get all the spatial derivatives. On the right-hand side, we get the time derivative. Uh, I lied, we actually get the, uh, yeah, we everything's fine there then. Um, so simplify it down then, uh, yeah, QE, okay, yep, 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 good to go. Okay, so yeah, we just plug in V to the gamma term and the V into the derivative term, so we need to take the time derivative. All right, um, and then we just got to equate like terms, and what we see is that sine goes to coat sine and sine go together, so we have, um, here we have A omega uh, is equal to Q E naught M sine theta. Good to go there. And then a, a a gamma, rather, is equal to Q E naught over M cosine theta. Okay, cool. We've seen this before. Take the squares, factor it out, divide over, use Pythagorean identity to get rid of the sine and cosine. Okay, we've kind of seen this scheme before to isolate the A's. Pretty cool, in my opinion. Um... Now that we see that the sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta goes to 1, and we have Q E naught over M squared, we can divide by the omega squared plus gamma squared, and we can, now we can take the square root, which simplifies our A down to Q E naught over M square root of omega squared plus gamma squared. Okay, cool enough. If that's the case, what we need to do is say that tangent of theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, Okay, and from the equating like terms, we know that sine theta is equal to A over omega divided by Q E naught over M. Similarly, cosine is equal to A gamma uh, divided by Q E or Q E naught over M. And as you might expect, the M, Q, and E naught terms cancel, the A's cancel, and we're left with omega over gamma. Therefore, our theta is equal to tan inverse of omega gamma. So... With that, we can substitute everything back into the steady state solution. And we see that our A term goes to Q E naught over M square root omega squared plus gamma squared. And the cosine is equal to KZ plus or minus omega T plus tan inverse omega uh, over gamma in the X direction. And if we take the cross product to find the um, F uh, magnetic force, 
uh, we see that we get the same thing, except now we're just pointing in the z direction. So the gamma factor is affecting two spots, one in the amplitude, one in the phase. Um, and so if we average the cosine and sine, that goes to zero. So to calculate the time average, we rewrite the cosine as the product of the sine or the cosine products and minus the sine products. And what we show then is that once we do that, um, when we find the average value, well, it's pretty simple to um, break it on down further. And the reason why we do that is because, um, oh yeah, I'm getting lost. Okay, yeah. And then we just put backtrack and in, in this calculation, it's pretty easy. So here we see that the cosine of KZ minus omega T plus theta is equal to the cosine omega or cosine theta, cosine KZ minus omega minus sine theta, and then times the uh, red sine KZ minus omega. Um, so that part goes to zero. We like that. Um, and we just got to keep simplifying down then at that point. Um, sub everything in, I suppose, and uh, get to work with that. We see from there that the red goes to zero. So if we plug that into uh, the F magnet, we get the cosine theta, which is KZ minus omega T uh, squared. And then, uh, yeah, just keep running through. Easy enough, I suppose. Um, but remember that tan theta is equal to omega over gamma, which is opposite, opposite over adjacent. So if that's the case, then cosine being adjacent over hypotenuse, cosine theta is therefore equal to gamma over the square root of omega squared plus gamma squared. Since omega is the opposite leg, gamma is the adjacent leg. The hypotenuse is the square root of both of them added together. Uh, easy enough. Uh, no time dependence there, so that comes out. And then the square just goes to pi over omega. And uh, yeah, everything cancels nice. And we see that the average force goes to pi, gamma, q squared, e not squared, over m omega c times omega squared plus gamma squared z. Notice how before it was zero with the damping term, it has something and it's uh, kind of gross. But again, this average stuff tells us a lot of what we need to know. Again, since the speed of light travels fast, we can't necessarily measure anything in a particular time frame, so averages are used more often than they're not.